Well, hey everyone, how's it going? So one of the questions that I get quite often is uh, about the different MOSFETs. Um, <clears throat> this is kind of a cheat sheet here that I use um, to determine wh what MOSFETs go where. I pretty much have it memorized now, but there are actually different MOSFETs, and they're rated for different voltages, amps, and so on like that. And uh, you can see here that I've got uh, some RU190Ns, and underneath there... I've got some HY3810s. Now, the difference between these two is the HY3810s are for a 48 volt inverter, which I have right here. And the 190s are actually meant for a 24 volt inverter. And yes, it does actually make a difference. And I'm going to demonstrate what happens when you actually mix and match these MOSFETs. You may not immediately notice a problem. In fact, your inverter might run fine and you'd say, okay, that's everything's fine. I don't know what they're talking about. But long term, actually probably short term too, you're going to run into a problem. Number one, I guarantee you that after um, throwing about 500 watts on this, they're going to blow the MOSFETs up. It's just going to happen. Now, what you can see here, what I did to demonstrate is in the front here, I've got some 190s that are 24 volts. And then in the back here, I have some uh, HYs, uh, 3810s that are here. And uh, so I mixed the two together. Now the rest of them match. This inverter came to me for warranty repair. All the MOSFETs were gone. So I went ahead and replaced them all with the proper MOSFETs. But I went ahead and left one set here that was a different set of MOSFETs to kind of demonstrate and show you what's going to happen. Now, I'm not going to destroy all these MOSFETs because that would be stupid for a video, but I'll kind of show you what happens when you actually have uh, mismatched MOSFETs. So I also have here, to kind of show you, I also have here my thermal thermometer. And we'll give it kind of a, a baseline right now. We'll start with, it's about room temperature, which is, you know, 71 or so. This one is about the same. And this one's a little bit warmer because I had this thing running just a little while ago. So there's your hint as to what is actually going to happen. So we're back down to 70 over on this side. 71 so almost room temperature but <clears throat> so you can see that these over here are kind of normal but this on the other hand is not so normal see how warm that is okay so this is what i'm going to do fans are going to be off now this is in power save mode right now everything seems to be functioning fine right so let's go ahead and put it into standard Power mode. All right, so we have a fully functioning inverter here. Absolutely nothing going on here. However, look at that draw. Look at that. That's about 200 watts per hour that this inverter is drawing. Now, it's coming back a little bit because the MOSFETs are actually heating up, but it's probably going to stay right around the 4 area. That's really high at 50 volts. But everything seems to be running just fine you might say to yourself well everything's fine i don't understand what's going on here what are you talking about everything works fine i guarantee you that if i put a load on this inverter it's going to end up blowing up all these mosfets I guarantee you i can actually show you <clears throat> let's go ahead and start we'll start over here so we're about 72 74 it's warming up a little bit as it should about 70 on this side but let's travel over to this side. Look at that. Getting pretty warm. 80 degrees. Let's hit that MOSFET. Look at how hot that is. 147, 150. These MOSFETs here are rated to about 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And as you can see, they are getting really close to that failure point where they're going to start melting. These MOSFETs back here, which are meant for the 48 volt inverters, you can see that actually is cooler. Now they are getting hotter because they're doing more work to compensate for these. And that heat is actually transferring through the rest of it. This heat sink up here 
this big one, you can see it's starting to get warmer. It really is. It's getting hotter. It's getting hotter for sure. Even our donuts up here are starting to get hot. Look how warm they're getting. This is just at idle. It's not doing anything. The control board, let's go with a low frequency driver. That's yeah, starting to get warm. CPU looks like it's okay. Everything on here is getting warm. Okay, let's go back again to these MOSFETs. Look at that. <clears throat> that is extremely hot. That is, we're looking at these things are any second now going to fry. Okay. Whereas these over here are more normal. Now they are picking up some of the heat from the other ones and doing some more work. So they are going to be a little bit warmer than they should at idle. But yeah, this is, um, that's really, really hot. That is extremely hot. This is where the fans would start coming on about now. But the, um, the thermistor, which is actually right under there, is not registering the heat yet because it's not quite, let's put this in C. Yeah, it comes out of 45C, which you can see here that that part of the uh, uh, heat sink is actually not at 45C. This part is getting there. Look at that. Pretty hot. So anyways, that is why you can't mix and match these. Eventually there will be a thermal runaway on these things. They're just going to pop. It'll be a really loud bang. I'll get these fans on to cool this down a little bit. It'll be a really loud bang. See some sparks, flames, arcs, all sorts of stuff would start happening here because the MOSFETs are basically failing internally. And um, it's like shorting them out. So that's why it's super important that you get MOSFETs that are rated... <clears throat> Still really hot. This heat sink. Oh yeah. That heat sink is too hot to the touch. Oh, those MOSFETs are... Those poor things. Yeah. So, there you have it. That is why you cannot mix and match MOSFETs. You, can, you have to get the proper MOSFETs. Yeah, these MOSFETs are definitely more within range, 72 on that side. So that is ex that is exactly why you need to get the proper MOSFETs for your setup. These MOSFETs here are fine. Those are fine. A little warm on that side, but again, this, this whole control board is warm. All that heat, you know, I've always said these heat sinks are kind of overkill, but in this case... It's actually doing a pretty good job keeping it cool, but it, it, there's no way, even with all the fans on. I mean, that thing is that thing's too hot to the touch. It's just running at idle. There's no way that that heat sink there will be able to control the temperatures coming off of that. So that's why it's very important. Another thing is you see that green light is on for that low frequency driver. It's likely that the low frequency driver, I'm going to have to replace that. It's likely the low frequency driver is bad now. Um, so I'll go ahead and replace that. I've got a, a million of these things on hand now. Um, these driver boards. So I'll probably end up replacing that anyway because the green light is staying on even though the inverter is off and that's not a good sign. So it's likely that this thing is probably burning up inside or something else is going on. It's confused as all hell, that's for sure. But, uh, yeah, so anyway... There you have it. I hope this video helps. I really do because it, it frustrates me. It really does frustrate me when, um, you know, I get these questions and, and there's there's misinformation. Um, maybe the seller that you bought the inverter from doesn't understand because these inverters are sold by different sellers, different third-party sellers on eBay and Amazon and so on. So they all might not know. They might just be reselling, you know, these inverters. So it's super important that uh, you know you get the proper proper equipment.
and uh, yeah, this transformer is a little warm. These donuts are definitely pretty warm here. All that heat, all that heat transferring from here going into here through the transformer, I mean, that's just, it's only a matter of time before the, the whole thing just blew up. Um, of course, that's how I discharge the caps. I leave the fans running. You can see the lights are getting dimmer and dimmer. It's actually going to go even more dim here in just a second. Yeah. All right, so all the caps are discharged. There's a little bit of green left in there, but not enough. These 48-volt caps here really hold on to their charge really, really well. <laughs> they really do. Um, so anyway, there you have it. So if you ever need to replace your MOSFETs, be absolutely sure. you got to get the right ones. These RU-190s are 24 volts. The, uh, the HY3810s are 48 volts. That's super important. There's all sorts of different MOSFETs, MOS numbers, all right here. This is my little personal cheat sheet. Tells me exactly what MOSFETs go where, just so that I'm sure. I've got most of this memorized anyways. Um, you know, and I have, I have so many MOS boards now. Just boxes and boxes and boxes of them, boxes and boxes. So... <laughs> Um, yeah, anyway, so uh, hopefully that, that helps you out a lot. Um, you know, this, this thing is so hot still. I mean, it really is. It, it really is. It's starting to cool down, so it's not too hot to the touch, but these two on this side, especially, you know, and that's where that one set of MOSFETs right here. And these are too hot to touch. I'm not even going to try. Maybe they've cooled down a little bit. Uh, where am I at? There am I. Yeah, they're cooling down. But still, that's why you got to check. So if you have any questions, let me know. I'll be glad to help. You can hit me up on the Power Tank Inverter website. I do have the 5,000-watt low-frequency Power Tank Inverters in stock now. I have five each. They are obviously going to be more expensive than their counterparts, the Power Jack counterparts, but they are much more robust. So... Uh, head over there if you're interested in getting one of those. Of course, message me anytime. I'd be glad to help. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Take care.